I felt like I was drinking wine today, so I tie a rugby around my shoulders. Like, who, who do I think I am? We're getting fancy today. You know, pull some cameras out in a couple bottles, I start tying shirts around my neck. <laughs> Hello, this is Mind Your Manners. I'm Mayhem Loren, and today we're entering the wonderful world of wine. To my right, we have Alexis, an expert. To my left, we have Christine, manager of videos at Vice Sports. Then we have me, the guy in the middle, who's not an expert, but I know a little something. But let's start with our opening wine. Before you tell us the correct way, I want to know if Christine has any stories about opening wine. I was on a date, and I was trying to be like fancy and be cool, and I ordered um, a wine, and then the waiter brought it out, poured a tiny bit in the glass, and just stared at me. And I s looked at it, I looked at him, and I was like, can I have a little more? <laughs> and he was just like, you're supposed to tell me if it's okay. And I just like took it, chugged it, and was like, cool, great. Okay, I'll take it. I had no idea what was going on. That actually happens a lot. If it's something that you ordered by the glass, they're pouring you a taste of it to see if you like it or not. If you've ordered a bottle, they're pouring it for you to taste to see if it's faulty or if the wine is correct. If it were faulty and had off smells that are, you know, just not good, you're totally well within your rights to say, I'm gonna show you how to use a, a correct wine key. And some people are intimidated by these. Um, they prefer to use the one with the, the handle wings That's and right. things. The problem is you don't really have a lot of control. They can break the cork and then there's really not a very good way to then fish out the rest of it without pushing it all into the bottle. You gotta use a strainer. And then you have to use a strainer. And then Who you wants have to, to treat your wine like pasta? Exactly, it's pretty easy. What you're gonna do is, you want to cut the foil underneath the bottom rim. A lot of people do it on the top, that's not correct. The reason being, you can get kind of junk under there, under the foil, and if you only cut this top part and then you pour the wine, it's gonna carry that right into your wine glass, which is gross. And then you're gonna take the knife. Hopefully it's sharp, mine is not. I need a different wine key. I'm gonna grab mine from my bag. I have my bling wine key that I use every day. While you're grabbing uh, the wine key out of your bag, can you do me a favor? Yep. Can you grab your scarf? The minute Alexis walked into the room, I knew that I could trust <laughs> her a thousand percent. Because when I saw the scarf hair nail coordination, I knew it was real. You want to pull the foil off. Then you're gonna take your cloth. You're gonna wipe the top of the bottle, because again, there could be a bunch of like dust and other things under there. Right into the center of the cork. You take the first ledge, put it here, pull, and then you use the leverage to pull it the rest of the way. And you wanna do it gently, you could go a lot faster, but you're more likely to snap the cork in half that way. We're gonna smell it. The cork is the first line of defense. If this stinks, like really unpleasant, probably something's wrong with the wine. I'm so excited to be that cool friend that won't make these mistakes anymore. So I'm gonna pour a little bit. He's got it, look at this. Let the wine air out. Is there a proper way to stir it? Like I'm you're, just the way that you're doing it right now. The safest it? way is to do it on a tabletop like this. What is the purpose of stirring? So what you're doing is you're allowing the molecules in the surface of the wine to sort of to aerate, basically. So you're smelling particulates of the wine. Also why we use two different shaped glasses, because a red wine needs more surface area, you want it to interact with the oxygen. With a white wine with more delicate aromas, you want to keep them confined in the glass. So we're gonna swirl the wine. When you get fancy, you can do it this way. Am I there yet? Oh, I don't know, the soda. I'm not gonna try that one yet. And then you smell it, and it should smell nice and fresh and delicious. Is there a proper way to hold wine glasses? Yeah, by the step. See, you got, there, there's so, see, I'm always holding well, it like this. We don't want fingerprints cool. all over this. That's a pet peeve of mine. That also changes the temperature of the wine. Why am I here? Because you have a nice scarf on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the wine should smell fresh, and we get fruit, and yeah, this is just delicious red wine. It's a beautiful color, too. Mm hmm Like a burnt burgundy. You know what, this would look good on an Air Max 95. <laughs> like if they had shades of gray and then little burgundy mm -hmm. highlights. The thing I love about the taste is it's a two-step process. You get the initial taste, then the aftertaste. In a good you know, way, yeah. A quick punch to the jaw, mm -hmm. then a swift kick to the testicles at the end. I love that part. I think we are saying about the jaw part, you feel that kind of pinch in the back of your cheeks, that's the acid. I feel it in your salivary glands, and then your mouth will start to water. My mouth is watering. Me too. God bless acid. I'm gonna be rude and just pass it down. Guys, I'm too nervous to pour this myself. I got you. Thank you. 
correct me if I'm wrong because, again, I'm no expert. There's a four-step process with identifying the wand. We look for color, see if we see any particles floating around in there. True. Then we have smell, which, you know, we went over. Smell the wand, smell the cork first. The most important part, taste. And then after we uh, evaluate what we've done and we think about it and we categorize that wand, we give it a, a profile. I mean, my favorite thing about going through this process isn't to get the wine right. It's about thinking about the wine in a deeper way and just like, experiencing it rather than just kind of crushing. So when you smell, you want to think about, is it really intense? What am I smelling? Is it fruit? Is it more a vegetal character? Is it spicy? And then you taste it and you think about it in the same way that we did when we were smelling it. What am I smelling? Does it match? Is it different? Do I like it? I like it. I need you to become one with the wand. Okay. And I think we conclude that we like it. Yes. No, we love it. I brought us a sparkling rosé. I mean, bubbles excite me. I like the color of it. We're off to a good start. We are off to a good start. Oh, this is good. Yeah. This is like an apple juice on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Totally. I brought this because we're going to do some pairings, and the first one that we're going to start with is going to be fried cheese. That fried foods pair well with sparkling wine because you want to clean your palate and feel refreshed so that you then go for that next bite of food. That was like my childhood <laughs> and my future in one bite. Wow. <laughs> And then it makes you want to like do it again. It's just like an explosion of just all the flavors, but also you feel so refreshed after drinking that. It just feels like nice. It's like having a nice Coke with a pizza. You know how that feels like so refreshing? Totally. For the you know? same reason. But this is like the adult version of that. Yeah, that's what I told you. We're on the same, same wavelength right now. The thing with pairing is there's kind of two rules of thumb. You either go with the food, or you go against Opposite, the food. Food and wine tastes only in the context of what you're having before and after each one of them. So if you had mint or brushed your teeth before you come out and have a glass of wine with me and I pour you a glass of, of white wine, it's gonna, yeah, taste, it. it's gonna taste sweet. Awful. What is the right way to do this? You're gonna hold it in your dominant hand. Okay, lefty up. Yeah. You can use two hands if you don't feel comfortable. Yep. Exactly. Stop Good. here. Yeah. That was a totally clean pour. If you were walking around and pouring, you can turn it a quarter turn so that the drip stays in the bottle so there. So smart. Yeah. I'm willing to admit my flaws. I think I don't pour as smoothly or as delicately as either of you. We're gonna have a little Riesling with some spicy food. So I decided on this pairing because I really, today, wanted to do things that people are eating kind of on the regular, not just, you know, restaurant food. It's a veggie taco, but it's spicy. So we have a wine that's a little bit off dry, meaning it has a little bit of residual sugar. What I'd like you to do is taste the wine. You'll notice some of the sweetness, and then take a bite, and the fruit will stay, but the wine won't taste sweet anymore. And then take another sip of the wine. It's one of the best pairings in history. It tastes completely different. Like, yeah, you, like you said, it's just not as sweet. The sugar recedes, the fruit remains so it doesn't get lost with the food. It stays refreshing, this has got nice acidity. Again, our mouth should be watering. I love yeah. it, it's, it's, it's almost like a little game. See how you can change the wine, enhance it, you know? Exactly. Keep the fruit, take away, like, no, nah, this, this is great. I'm also noticing that um, I'm still technically crushing wine over here. I'm not really <laughs> savoring anything, I'm just drinking it. Does that mean you like the wines? Yeah, it's delicious, well, I mean, everything they're, they're is so good. Amazing. This is a very interesting color. Red wines. People think I'm having meat, gotta have red wine. I think that what happens is they get a little pigeonholed into, I have to drink a really full-bodied wine, particularly with your steaks, your lamb, and things like that. You can do a lighter-bodied red that has fresher fruit, and it's gonna be brighter. I was gonna say it tastes like really fruity, or like almost like um, apples. It's like a sophisticated Kool-Aid. I think you might also notice that it has a little more funkiness than the wines that we were drinking previously. A little gamier quality, which I think is going to be awesome with uh, a meat dish. I'm on a steak break, but I think I'll eat these mushrooms. We have our Flintstone size steak here. Let's dig in. So what do we think? I think this is amazing. <laughs> this wine 
this whole segment, this whole experience, the scarf, the coordination, I'll, I'll bring it up twice. I'm lacking in the style department right. compared to you guys right now. No, I'm kind we'll of black upset. everything. Listen, that's all you need. It just feels like the perfect combination. I don't think I've actually ever had like steak and wine. That's actually a first. I mean, steak with a glass of red is a historical pairing. It's like a laundromat and money laundering or a car wash. Those are good businesses to launder. Yeah, those so are the I've heard. you think of. So I've, so I've heard. I love this because this is like the perfect balance of rich and fruit. Like, I, I get both. Yeah, it's complex. You know? This wine is, it has like a lot of like feelings to it. I guess I would describe it as like somebody who doesn't understand like how to actually, what words to use. No, no, no. Like, you do understand. Right. Don't downplay your status. If this was full court, you'd be dunking. You'd be dunking bottles right now. Yes. With wine, I don't, I don't know what makes it so scary. It's like anything else that I don't know about. I should be fine asking. Ho hopefully it's no longer scary. Are, are we past that? I'm totally past it. And I'll tell you the truth, a thousand days ago, I knew nothing about this. So I know you have a soft spot for orange wine. Like you couldn't believe. Uh, wow. Little bit of controversy around orange wines. This is like the color of Usher. <laughs> so orange wine is white wine. It is when you take the white grapes and you allow the skin to ferment with the juice. So you're getting a full-bodied, tannic, generally dry white wine. I have a confession to make. I had no idea where orange wine came from. I didn't even bother to think about it. I just knew that I loved it. In my head, I thought it was maybe white and someone shaved some orange zest in it and didn't tell. I get that question a lot. Is yeah. it real oranges in there? Nope. It's just citrus-esque. I'm fortunate that I, I was late to the wine game because I know a lot of wine purists aren't really into natural wines because it kind of goes against the grain and it's opposite of what they've been doing. I got into wine through natural wine, so I mean, I love it. Yo, this is incredible. Yeah, this is some really special stuff. This is like, I don't know how to describe the taste. I have no idea. All I know is I feel like it would go really well with like chocolate. This would with a dark chocolate. Like a dark chocolate. Like yeah. in the way of those like yes. chocolate oranges. Again, same wavelength. We got Do we this. have any dark chocolate? Hold on. Surprise. What? It's oh chocolate. my. Mm -hmm. Yeah, generally chocolate is a really hard pairing. I feel like this works though. Wow. It's like an orange chocolate lint. I agree with you. There's a sweetness to the wine that's keeping it in balance. I like this. I love this. Shout out to your great mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm bent. I don't even know what's going on. Like, I'm gonna keep it real. <laughs> Today we went over how to open wine, the four steps on tasting, and pairings. One more cheers. Cheers. <laughs>